Hey guys, so today we're gonna make a video on how to rekey a 1999 Honda Accord ignition cylinder. Um, this situation happens a lot for us, either a door cylinder or ignition cylinder for many different types of vehicles come in here. Uh, we don't actually pull the ignition cylinders here or the door cylinders in most cases, in about 90% of the cases. Uh, liability issues, time issues, and things like that. So we just decided to, for the most part, what we do is we send that over, we send our customers to Goodyear, we have an agreement with them, they'll pull, pull the cylinders, they call us, we go pick it up, we rekey it, we take it back to them, they put it in. So that's kind of what we do with Goodyear a lot. So we've developed a partnership here in town, they charge us a set rate, so we can tell the customer every time it's this amount to do it, and it's a win-win for both of us. It gives us extra income, it gives them extra income at Goodyear, win for both of us. So I'm gonna go pick up the ignition cylinder and the key, and uh, then I'm gonna bring it back, and then I'm gonna key up that cylinder uh, and do it on video for you so you see how that process works, and then we'll go take it back to them and they can go install it from there. Okay, so uh, I'm on my way to get the uh, 1999 Honda Accord ignition cylinder. Uh, I'll be at the, uh, the uh, mechanic here in a minute and I'm just going to pick up the cylinder and then bring it right back to our shop and rekey it. And then I'll take it back and deliver it to, uh, to the mechanic and he'll go ahead and uh, install it in the vehicle and be good to go. So we do this probably three or four times a week. Um, there's always someone that needs their ignition rekeyed or the door cylinder rekeyed. But anyway, we're gonna pick it up here and then uh, we'll pick back up at the shop. So I got the uh, ignition cylinder and the Honda key here and we are going to rekey them. But I wanted to show you first, this is a 1999 Honda Accord ignition cylinder. Okay, this moves up and down. If you notice here on the back, there's a drive pin right there. So you have to take that drive pin out and then It'll allow the whole cylinder to come out. Then we can take it apart, take the wafers out, and uh, replace them with new wafers and match it to their key that they want to match to. Now, there are some issues sometimes with the keys worn, so it's kind of in between a cut sometimes and things like that. So sometimes you have to make adjustments on the wafers, uh, trying to stay away from that. But in this case, the customer wants his door key to work his ignition. So he won't allow me to create a new key that doesn't have any wear on it. So I have to make the best of what I can with the key that he's given me. But let's go ahead and start this process. We'll be rekeying this cylinder with this particular Honda rekeying kit. There's a few different models, but this is the particular one for this particular ignition cylinder. We have, which I'll show you really quick, we have a bunch of different pin kits. Ford, GM, GM, Honda, Kia, Toyota, Ford, another Ford, another Toyota, a Nissan, Subaru, the Honda one we have over there. We have another GM one, another Chrysler one, and another miscellaneous one back here. So, all right. I'll put these all back really quick and we can continue on with this video. But yeah, we have these come in all the time. So let's go ahead and uh, get this going here. So here's our kit. Very simple kit on this particular one. This kit only has number one, number two, number three, number four, five, and six. Those are all different size wafers, one through six. And then the springs. So very simple uh, setup for this. So let's go ahead and start and I'll drive this drive pin out so we can get the cylinder taken apart so we can rekey it. All right, so I, I need to knock this pin out, uh, this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, driver pin or whatever you call it. I can't remember the name for it. There it is right there. I need to get that out of the way. And hardest part is being able to grip it and move it. I may need to punch it out the other side actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch it out the other side because I'm not able to get enough angle on this. There we go, push it right back in. Okay, so I've got the pin, the driver pin back in where it is. Um, I'm gonna punch it out from the back. It's just that it's in a weird angle. So I was trying to do it the other way, but it didn't work. So, here we go. There we go. Oh, it fell out, I was like, uh, disappeared. <laughs> there it is, okay? So that was right inside of that hole there, okay? Pull that out, 
this comes off next. You don't have to worry about, oh, which way did it go? Because it only goes, that side's bigger, that side's smaller. That side's bigger, that side's smaller. So it only goes on that way, okay? Set that there. <clears throat> now, here's the problem key. His key doesn't work it very well, the way he doesn't want it to, so we're gonna rekey it. So what I'm gonna do is pull that out, and I'm gonna go ahead and take out all these old pins, or wafer, sorry, not pins, one by one. Then I'm gonna clean all this up too, because it's really gunky in here. This is for a 1999 Honda Accord. A lot of the Hondas around this will be very similar to this type. It's not that every vehicle is different or anything, but um, this is basically the concept behind them. So what I'm doing in here is I'm scooping the, the springs out and the old wafers out. And there's a little bit of grease in here. There's the spring. Here's the next spring right there. And then there's the other one. And one more spring there. Okay. Basically, there's a spring, and then the, there's a spring, and then the little wafer uh, pin goes on top of it, and the spring later pushes down. So everything is cleared out of it now. See the chassis is all empty okay so <clears throat> based off this I can see here that there's six different sizes of tumblers right six different wafer tumblers so and here's the key that they want to work so I'll put the key in here your first cut is right there and then it goes on and on and on so all I need to do is basically find the wafers that interact with each one of these cuts So first one's first is right there. It's a shallower cut. So I can't remember if, if it's the higher the number, the smaller the wafer, or the higher the number, the bigger the wafer. So it just can't really mess up. You just trial and error on it. I'm just gonna get it to match so it's flush and it will turn in that, that housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a spring in because you gotta have a spring, which goes in right there. Right there, see? And then the first cut on here, to me, it looks like it's probably either a one or a two. So usually what I do is I say, what's the deepest one that's on the key? Okay, that, and then what's the shallowest? And I can say, okay, in between there, I can guess that that's maybe a one, two, three, four, five, six, till it's the deepest. So you kind of eyeball them and say, okay, well, if this is the shallowest cut, that's more likely a one or a two. Try the wafers until you get the one that lines up flat. And then, oh, if it's a really deep cut, well, you just try the deepest cut, go down the next one if it doesn't work until you get a flash. Flat, sorry. So right now, I got my wafer in there. I'm going to put the very first pin in. Let's just go ahead and try a, a two, because it seems like a two might work. I'm literally just going to sit it in there like that. See how it's spring loaded on top of that? Okay. Boom. See how that's flush? Oops, sorry. And how that's flush? It's a little, it overhangs just barely, but I think that's going to be the right cut for that. It's Maybe, maybe not. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll try it out. I'll say, okay, that was a two. So let's try a one. And then I'll try a three if I need to until I figure out what is flush on there. So, cause you want the, the perfect one so they can work with that. So this is a one and actually a one is better. It's flatter there and flatter there. So that's why I, I check a couple of them see. So now I know that's a one and then I can compare the cut and say, well, anything at that same depth level is more than likely a one also. So the next one goes down another cut. So let's try a, let's try a, a two on it. Let's see how a two does. So first things first, uh, let me grab my tweezers here. Got a little spring. Put the spring in the next one. And then it's, it went down a notch. So let's try a two and see if it's a two or maybe a three. In. Yeah, to me that looks flush and flush, so we're still good. So I don't need to touch anything else on that one. So let's go to the next chamber. One, two, it looks like. I'm trying to see. Okay, so it's right behind that. So 
because in the ignition, sometimes you're not getting all the cuts. It may start at the second cut and key on. It may start at the third cut and you're starting from cut three to 10. Or it may start from one to like seven and cut off you know, some of the other cuts because they mix up some of the cylinders in the door. Say that there's 10 cuts on your total car key, right? Well, in the door, there may be seven of the cuts and then it doesn't give you the other three that work the ignition. So it's up to you to decipher the rest of them. Same thing in here. This, this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cuts. I believe this is a 10 cut key. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's a 10 cut key. So only eight of the cuts are in here. So I'm trying to find out which eight is it kicked off to the end or kicked off to the front of the key. But <clears throat> so far so good. So I'm just gonna try in the next one because it looks like it's uh, it's probably like a two or something. You know, try it, there's no no harm in putting the wrong one in. You just pull it out, put a new one back in until it's the right flush. So let's, let's try a three on that one, see how that one works. Put three in here. Sticks out of them. If you're not sure, just grab the housing, stick it in there, see if it turns or if it's, see it's kind of just a little bit, not really, just a very little bit rubbing. So it's probably one of the, like I said, there's wear on this key. So you're trying to capture a happy medium. I would say that that works pretty well. If I go lower, it's not gonna work sufficient. So I'll leave that one in. Okay, so I'll go to the next cut. The next one goes up a little bit. So it's probably a two, if that one's a three, and it's not quite as deep as the three is, then it's more likely to two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a two wafer in there. Let's see how that works. Okay. Yeah, actually, now that I've switched the key or flipped it over, the previous one's a little off too. So I'm gonna go back one. Like I said, the goal is to get them all flush. Put one in here real quick and just see what that does. Just trial and error until I get it the way I need it. Yep, that's off, so I can know that it was the other way I needed to go. Because I went down and cut, but I need to go up and cut. So, grab that wafer. Go to a four. Let's see how the four All I'm doing is just going cut by cut until they're all flush. Yeah, you know, like I said, there's wear on these, so it's kind of you try the higher one, the lower one, until you find the one that's closest to where you need it, and then go from there. So I'm going to take this back. And every time you flip it over, you have to hold the wafers in on the other side of the key because it will fall out. Unless there's enough gunk to keep it in place. Yeah, so a couple here just off a little bit. There's just like, some of these are right in between. So the thing that most people don't want to do is you don't want to be grinding down on these wafers unless you absolutely have to, or you might have to skip one of the cuts really in between. You just can't get it to work. It's snagging up. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in the best I can right now. And then I'll go back and find any ones that are going to have like a discrepancy on them and try to critique them until I get it to the way I need it. So I'll continue to put these little springs in for the next wafer. You can see all that. Two on this one. One or three. And as you can see, it's literally just matching them up. Nothing crazy to learn. Yep, that's another in between one. So we're having a lot of. A lot of uh, cuts that are worn. That's good. 
goal is to keep it flat on the sides so that whatever it's in, it can turn, right? Okay, so I've got three more cuts to go. This one looks like a one. It doesn't look like it's much of a cut. Another little spring right here. I'm not quite perfect, a little off. <clears throat> Let me try it too then. And the, and the spring rests up underneath this little flap. So the spring is under that flap and it pushes it up and down. Right there, see? Perfect. Okay, so the next one goes down a little bit. So if that was a two, I'm gonna go ahead and put a three in and see if, I, if it's a three. Springs get tangled up on each other sometimes. Just twist them until they come off of each other. Perfect. One more cut to go. And then we'll show you how it all works. The last one. Let's see, it's there. So probably like two or three also. We didn't have too many deep cuts on this key. It's also probably because a little bit of wear. <clears throat> so I'll probably turn in here. Actually, it's turning pretty good. There's just a slight right there with slight rub. So it's that's pretty good, especially for all the wear that we had in the cylinder. So <clears throat> let me look here. I'm just doing this so it makes some scratch marks. It's very light. It's not that hard. It's barely off. I'll put it that way. So I'm going to open it up and see which one's probably rubbing. Looking down this, I mean, it's right on almost. So it looks like this one, just a hair, I might have to take down, because it's, in a, it's a halfy, right between the middle. So I'm gonna modify that real quick, and then we'll show you the final product. Okay, so I've got the, uh, basically put the cylinder back in and hit the driver pin back in is all I did. So, and reassembled it, so that I can put the key in and basically to show you that it works. Okay, so key works. Key back out, looks like that. And that's how the uh, cylinder looked like originally. We've keyed it back to the, the their current key that they wanted and it works. So as you can see, we're just matching up wafers, putting the springs in, match up the wafers until it all lays flush on both sides so it can turn over in that housing. Um, <clears throat> thanks for tuning in. We appreciate the support as always. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to get notifications when we have new videos come out. And uh, we, uh, you can follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, on all the social media platforms, and we appreciate the support.